Yeah. yeah. Oh, so did that Instagram thing? Yeah, what up, what up, uh, blog, blog, uh, here, with the Pure Wow team, some meetings in Boston, which is an interesting feeling because I love Boston humans, but I hate the Patriots so much that even when I'm here, I feel like I'm in a more of a warrior mindset. Like I'm ready to fight verbally and physically at all times with anybody. So, anyway, Babin did a good job because all the meetings we're doing today are things that we cannot film, and so I'll probably give him a good rant at the airport, but to fill out the vlog, uh, I guess you did something and got some questions. Yeah. So we're gonna do some Q&A here. Q&A. Which I think is a good format for us in general, because Q&A is like my, like Ask Gary V is like far and few between. Like, I think once, even a week, if we look at my schedule, just doing Q&A is a good format. So anyway, vlog, I hope you like this format. Go ahead, Bobby Bevan. So first off, how do you balance the- You don't have the person's name? I screenshot it. You're a bad I'm, guy. I'm not. See, honest. you're selfish. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pop but you know how I'm fun gonna, it would I'm be for that person balance. to have their name? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Fair enough, go ahead. Uh, how do you balance clouds and the dirt, and which do you focus on more and why? So define to everybody how I define clouds and dirt. Clouds to me is like the why, the strategy, the macro, the big thinking, the big picture, the operating system of like how you do things. And then the dirt is having the humility to go to these meetings, to actually, I post all my Instagram photos, the doing, the, the humility, ego humility, strategy execution, clouds and dirt. Uh, The way I balance it is they're both important at all times. I can swing back and forth to them. I can literally go from a meeting where like the call I had on the way out to our first meeting here today, Purell was with VaynerMedia's C-suite about a restructuring of how we handle all our business. Super meta. And I literally hung up and I posted something on Instagram and wrote all the copy as we were walking into our last meeting. To me, I balance them by doing whichever one is needed at the time. And so I don't think about it as balancing it. I think about it as time allocation. Like what should I be doing with my time? And I think that, you know, you made a joke of like we did a shoot for a client and we debated on the phone for 10 minutes where the should be located for that. I think that's being in the middle, right? I think uh, pandering to the way companies do things. We just had a meeting where they're like, oh, that was provocative. Us as, um, as the gallery media group holds and all the other things we do, us doing what every other publishing does, company does, is not a good idea. That's the middle. That's not gonna get you to the next place. And so for me, I'm just in the mindset of, you know, do either doing humble, dirty work, like the reason I am the best strategist in social media out there, I really believe this, is because I do both. I both sit at the top of a, media company that really does it at scale for the biggest companies in the world, but at the same token, there's very few humans that put out 100 fucking 40 pieces of content by hand a week and reads the, I mean, I literally just replied to Kyle in my comments, who, and I'm gonna show you, because I don't think you guys believe me when I do these fucking rants. I literally just replied to Kyle one second before Babin's like, let's do this video. Like, literally what I was doing one second before then was, replying to, like literally, like literally hearted Kyle's comment of, I'm digging the recent picks and quotes, man, right? Like many, many people watching here would argue that my time at this point in my career of reading Kyle's comment and hearting it in that minute was a bad use of my time. I think the dirt is the reason why I come up with such good clouds Being in the trenches drives my strategy. I live in reality and practicality, not in thesis or ideology or reading headlines or reading about people doing marketing. Uh, So I don't don't balance it. I just do whatever is needed at that second. You know, it's back to macro, micro. Micro speed. I'm just always doing something. I, right, Bobby? Like, that is the big breakthrough everybody on the team says. Like, there's just every second is, and so the reason I can do something every second is, and I don't watch a YouTube video or stand by the water cooler and talk about the Rockets game for 10 minutes is because I always value the dirt. And so in that half a second that I had right now in the transition of the call that I just had about a macro Vayner X strategy, right? The second transition I had before I started doing a macro thing like the vlog, 
was harding fucking Kyle's two cents on my last Instagram post. Clouds and dirt. Yeah, we should do more Q and A. <laughs> what uh, what do you do to recharge yourself when you feel physically exhausted? Sleep. Physically? <laughs> <laughs> Sleep. <laughs> Sleep matters. Rolling, so? I'm always rolling. But you can ask something, we won't put it in the vlog if it's sensitive Ryan's information. Sensitive. I think Ryan just wants more vlog time. <laughs> Ryan wants to be me. Um, Ryan, I would 27. At gmail.com. But I'm on our base. set it up for um, you. Yep, yep, cool. I'm gonna have Lisa there just to scoop up. Pick up, yep. Question from Joe. Joe. <laughs> How, at, uh, in your 20s, were you able to blow off parties and girls and leisure stuff and just focus on work? Oh, I can answer this one. <laughs> Nobody invited him anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> no girls wanted to associate with him. Did you see, have you seen a picture of his license? <laughs> Go on Ryan Harwood 27's Instagram right now. I think Instagram it's a cute photo. Stories. I think that's cute. Uh, you know, that's fair. Ryan was much cooler than me, you know, as, you know, as, a, as this, you know, as a Long Island club promoter, he no question had more of that, more of that opportunity. I think it comes down to, for me, it was easy because I was obsessed. I was obsessed with my career and I, I continue to be. I, uh, you know, I think the reason I can play in the dirt is my obsession and so I just think it's priorities. You know, most people are just gonna be average human beings and wanna live through, you know, party life and in their 20s and be a Goldman Sachs banker and play <laughs> tennis, you know? That's most people, the average, the people that are not remembered. And then some, are, <laughs> and some people, uh, and some people uh, are going for all time and I was going for all time and I was willing to give up the thing that most people want during that time. I just, I was, I, I had a, bur I forget, you know, recently I've remembered I had a burning desire to pay back my parents for being the best parents. I really wanted to build my family business for my parents a lot more than I've recalled until, re you know, as I'm like going through all these motions, I was passionate like just obsessed with building my family business for them because they had put me on so much emotionally. Not, you know, people always say, you know, when people like the razz me, they're like, easy for you to say you were given a liquor store. I wasn't. <laughs> I, I built a business for my family and left with no economics because emotionally my parents perfectly parented me, which has now been the foundation of all my success. Chris. Uh, if you decide to go all in and you get burned by a business partner, do you cut all ties or just accept how you were played and move forward? Well, I think the way that question was asked, it sounds like there was a prior relationship with that person. So if that person's a friend, you know, like, you know, th these are very personal questions. Here's what I would say. I am utterly unemotional when it comes to business uh, because that's just, you know, the game of business is business is real. Like, you can handle it any way you want. My default is always to be the bigger person because I think that's the ultimate leverage. And so, you know, even with the people I compete with, which I compete with feverishly, even people that have, I mean, look, there's people, there was a, there was a gentleman who stole hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of wine from Wine Library, went to jail, like hundreds of thousands. And I've forgiven him and, you know, interacted with him through the years. I just, I think grudges are poison and are anchors that hold you down. So for me, I think it's about chalking it up to experience. I think if you truly were played, if it's not your perceived notion that you were played, if every one of us saw the situation and said, oh yeah, you were played, you know, I chalk it up to you were played, be the bigger person, you know, and I would actually have, I would have, I would also feel sad, you know, to me, anybody who does something dishonest is coming from a place of weakness, I kind of feel bad for the person that played me. So, you know, yeah, I mean, I, uh, I, I just, I think the higher road is strategically right. You go faster, you're not looking backwards. When you're looking backwards, people are passing you by. And so, yeah, I'd feel bad for them. Cool. Yo. What's your route? That Q&A fire, I think we just hacked a new system. Leave in the comments if you like this new vlog, Ask Gary V concept. I think it's gonna fucking work.
like I say, man. Always.